In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This research society tried to create a ghost. The Philip experiment was a 1972 parapsychological experiment conducted in Toronto, Ontario to determine whether people could interact with ghosts manifested through human will. Mathematical geneticist Dr. A.R. George Owen and psychologist Dr. Joel Witten led the Toronto Society for Psychical Research. They aimed to create a fictional character and then try to communicate with it through a seance. They named the character Philip Aylesford, or just Philip. Philip's fictional history was a mix of real and made up events. He was born in England in 1624, became a knight at 16, and fought in the English Civil War. He worked as a spy for Charles II and was friends with him. Philip was unhappily married to a woman named Dorothy, but fell in love with a Romani girl who was later accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake. Heartbroken, Philip committed suicide in 1654 at the age of 30. The group started their seance around a table, but nothing happened at first. Then they changed the setting by dimming the lights and creating a more traditional seance atmosphere. Soon they felt a presence and experienced table vibrations, breezes, strange echoes, and tapping sounds that seemed to respond to questions about Philip's life. Sometimes the table tilted on one leg or moved across the room without anyone touching it. Even though they documented these strange occurrences with audio, video, and witness accounts, Philip never appeared to them. Wow, that's actually really interesting. They basically fabricated this person's life to conjure a non-existing being. That sounds pretty dangerous, and if there's really demons out there in the world, that sounds like an excellent way to introduce them into your life. I'll pass. Remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about people on TikTok talking that there was a artificial sun placed yeah. during the solar eclipse. Did you know Russia developed a satellite that mimics an artificial sun? For what purpose? I'll tell you. So this space engineer, Vladimir Siromaranikov, he came up with this concept, this giant satellite that would open up and have these mirrors on it that would mimic the sun. And the whole point of it was to help with farming in Soviet Russia at the time. Makes sense. It ended up getting supposedly decommissioned, but they said that this satellite was capable of spontaneous Spontaneously igniting buildings and cities oh, and drying up lakes and rivers. They tested it in France too, and they said it was 50 times stronger than a full moonlight. It's kind of cool. The satellite was called Zenamnia. I'm convinced that we're still using it in some capacity. And I only say that because we talked about direct energy weapons, and they not use that to start Infinite. fires. Yeah, I mean, because that the... was their fear is weaponizing it. I'm convinced that they figured out a better way to use it. Uh, yeah. Think about the Canada fires that we covered last year. It's like I don't know what to think about it, Weird. guys. There's two suns confirmed. <laughs> Wow, that is interesting. I bet you that if that's real, they're still using that device as a DEW. So whenever we have these forest fires, it could potentially be one of these mechanisms up in the sky just beaming down energy. I'm almost 100% certain that we are still using that today for not good reasons. We've got a new kind of electricity here. This is a helicopter light. Okay. It's 12 volt, 800 Watts. Mm -hmm. Now we couldn't we couldn't run it off the battery. Mm -hmm. But we run it off of this. Yep. And, and and look at the weight compared. Now, oh, yeah. is there any knowledge that you have of any battery in the world that can run this light and and weigh only a couple pounds? And remember, most of it's the case and stuff too. <laughs> Yeah. There is no such battery. If there was, my friend, you'd be manufacturing them, selling them to Tesla and making a lot of money. Yeah. These plates are not activated because they're not plugged in. You see, this is my, this system right here is a frequency generator. Okay. I generate five different frequencies. Yeah. This is the code right here, which I keep covered up. Okay. Okay, I can scramble the code. I have different ways of keeping my security here. Sure. Okay, but now when this, when I'm not sending any, any signal, now that's a solid gold 24 karat wire. Yeah. So the, it's, it's perfect. There's no signal going to the plates. All right. So we can go directly back here. Now what do you got? Yep. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, now. Okay. Now, let's start sending those five frequencies to the board. Okay. They alternate at different time cycles. Okay. As I activate the plates, mm -hmm. we free the electrons. We're starting to get some voltage. Right. Yep. 
Okay. Explaining this, the easiest way for a person that's not, that don't have knowledge, of course, you know, but people without knowledge, I say it's like ACDC. Mm -hmm. uh, DC, you have to have real heavy wire. Mm -hmm. AC, you can have real small wires. Yeah. Well, this here is, it acts like DC and it acts like AC. Yeah. It's not either one. So now you see now, but look at it, it's fluctuating from low 16s yeah. to the high 18s. It'll go up to 18 eventually. Yeah. You go 16, 18, okay. Same. Mm -hmm. It hasn't lost a single bit because it's not using it up. It's it's completely replicating itself constantly. See so, you now, like, we can we we if we can let it run for hours and it's still going to be the same. It's not going to change. Okay, so then if it doesn't change, and if you were to still yeah, use this light, the light, and the light doesn't overheat, mm -hmm. because... Well, feel it. It's, okay, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's warm, but not hot. Yeah, yeah. But now, hot. now if, okay. if we put this on the car, and let uh -huh. the engine sit there and run for an hour, yeah. that thing, it, it, you can see smoke coming off of it. <laughs> that's hmm. how hot it gets. Okay. So it gets really hot. So that's the difference. We've got a new kind of electricity here. Okay. The only way you can look at this is close your eyelids. Close yeah. your eyelids and then look directly into it and you'll see. Mm -hmm. You'll see how bright it is. Okay. I mean, I know I would really like to be able to see, I mean, if we had a current sense resistor and you even got that, you know, to be able to see mm -hmm. what kind of AC versus DC well, components and stuff we do have. Here's the thing. As we get into the Wait, next step. You know, right? If somebody's got a little bit of knowledge about oscilloscopes, if I put this on mm -hmm. the oscilloscopes, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what we're doing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's going to show up by the wave. Okay. okay. I've got... Is it okay then? Yeah, oh, sure. No. Yeah? Be, be, okay. Just be careful. Don't, uh, right. don't shock yourself. I know. Okay. Because this shock is not like electrical shock in the wall. It really hurts. Yeah. Okay, so it, we're at... 15 and a half, it looks very stable, you know, mm -hmm. running it. Okay. And can I switch to AC just to see if there is a detectable AC? Mm, I'll switch it to AC and see. Okay. Try it. Yeah, give it a try. And very low, 136 millivolts. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really and showing. It's, and it's not accurate. Is, it's yeah. kind of electricity. Sure. This is just it is really hot to the touch. I mean, we are yeah. generating power, and okay. you know, it's continuing to warm up. It's you know. it'll get it'll still get about a little hotter than that, you know. Mm -hmm. But when it's on that helicopter, you can cook an egg on it. Well, and also the helicopter is at 28 volts too. Yeah, they're putting you know. out 28 volts. Right. Yeah. So there is a difference yeah. there between the 15 and the 28. And remember, this yeah. this uh, this is a 24 volt bulb. Right. It's not 12, and we're mm -hmm. we're putting out 18 maybe. Yeah, 15 but, and a half. Yeah. This is a really interesting video. It's not very old, it's just a few days old. I would like to see a little bit more follow up on it because I'm curious as to what this device is actually made of. How is he getting these frequencies? Because if he is continuously running a consistent 15 volts to 18 volts, that's pretty good for small things. Now, those helicopter lights, honestly, if it was being backed up with as much power as it was supposed to be, it would be so much brighter in that room than what it currently is. But still, the simple fact that it's providing enough power to even run the light is really impressive if there's no other connecting power source to this device that he's got. I'm really curious to see a little bit more about this because this could be a very interesting design and just that small little box creating 15 volts of electricity, you know, steady electricity. Imagine if it was bigger and tuned a little bit more, but nonetheless, really interesting for a five minute long video to be probably even longer in real time for that battery to consistently being powered by 15 volts. That's pretty impressive. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. 
and currently we are sitting at 10,792 subscribers. And to everyone that's subscribed and are watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching. The Cheetos are tainted. I know it's not relevant to the page, it's just a friendly PSA. If y'all know who this is, please tag him below. He has ruined so many foods for me. There is no reason a fried food or whatever a baked should have living organisms in it. It looks fine right now, right? Now. That is disgusting. How? How? My question is, have they always been there? Or is this something new? If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. I really hope that that's a fake video of the Cheeto being under the microscope. Not that I really eat Cheeto poofs anyways, I think that that's the worst kind of Cheeto to be honest with you. I, I, all Cheetos in general to be to be fair. But it just looked like when it was snapped in half that it was dipped in something with hair and just extra dust and stuff. So. I'm wondering if that's just a fake microscope video, you know? If you have any information about this, let me know because that's pretty nasty if we just have standard snack foods that have bugs and stuff crawling in them. But it's just another reason not to eat things like that because it's already unhealthy in the first place. All right, you're good. This guy's a professional airbender and his videos have been getting a lot of attention lately. If you don't know what an airbender is, it's supposed to be a person with superhuman powers that can supposedly control the four elements of Earth. This, for instance, is the first video that he found out that he had these superhuman powers. Check this out. Alright, let's see if I can really push this. Alright. In this video, he's trying to control the wind to create waves on a lake. At first, it looks as if it could be just a coincidence, but then the next day, this happens. Could be just a coincidence, right? Maybe not. If you pay close attention, only the leaves that he's pointing at are moving in a circular pattern. After he uploaded this video, many internet users left comments stating that this is possibly the real deal, that he might actually have some sort of superhuman power. However, there were many that were still not convinced. But then, he uploaded this video. Check this out. Pay very close attention as the leaves seem to circle around his body as if he's in control of the wind. After uploading this video, most internet users were completely intrigued, but some still think that he's using some sort of electrical fan. So with the intention of proving that he's not, he uploads another video, but this time a bit different. Check this out. In this video, it appears as if he's controlling the wind to create certain patterns on a lake. And I'm pretty sure he would have to be using a gigantic electric fan to achieve such a thing. So I'm guessing that this is not the case. So could this be the real deal and does this man have superhuman powers like you see in the movie Avatar? I'm gonna call cap on this. I really do not think that he's airbending. I think he's just 
going into in and odd places and he notices that there's little whirlwinds happening. He's like, I'm going to film that. But maybe that's just my skeptic side thinking a little too harshly because it is really cool looking when you see him out there and he's bringing the leaves in and it's just going around him. That's very cool looking and it's very coincidental if it's not real magic. But I just have a feeling that it is fake. I don't know if he's actually using a machine to blow the leaves around and the water around, but I think he's using actual natural wind elements and he's just finding the right scenes to record himself in. Let me know in the comments of what you think about this. Queen Elizabeth I was actually a man. I don't believe it. So when she was nine years old, Elizabeth, she was sent off to a town called Bisley because there's a plague going on. And then King Henry, he hadn't seen her for many years. And so he was out on a hunting trip close to Bisley. So he's like, I'm going to go visit my daughter. On his way there, Queen Elizabeth got sick and died. King Henry VIII obviously had a very bad temper. And if it comes and sees that his daughter is dead, they're done, right? Yeah. She's looking for a girl that looks close to Queen Elizabeth. Can't find any girl. But Queen Elizabeth's friend, they said a very pretty boy. So they dress him up like Queen Elizabeth, like in her clothes. King Henry got there. There's no suspicion of that's not his daughter. Wow. So she became queen, potentially the boy became queen. And if you look back, people that were in the realm of Queen Elizabeth, they wrote that she had no weakness of a woman, but the mind of a man. Yeah, they do say that. That's interesting. Whenever she was in public, she would always wear a high collar. She would never leave her room without having her face fully painted in the makeup. Wow, that's actually really interesting. I've never heard that story before. I don't know if it was ever reported that Queen Elizabeth had children or not personally actually witnessed Queen Elizabeth having children, but the simple fact that it might have been a man and there was like this deep secret happening in the background, that is wild to me. And not too far from being out of the realm of possibility in my mind, that was probably a real story. What do you guys think? You think Queen Elizabeth was actually a guy in disguise? If so, I bet he lived his life on edge every day. Yup, somebody has some explaining to do because now we have eggs that are growing from a tree. And if y'all see him crack the egg, it looks like this. Eggs on the tree. And they cook just like eggs. Like this potentially being a real thing is flabbergasting. Can, can somebody show me or research what type of plant is this? And, and then there's like multiple people that are growing these egg trees that grow eggs on a tree so that means we don't need chickens which leads me to the question are the eggs on the tree going to hatch and where can I um, potentially buy this if I was looking to acquire one of these that's a whole new definition to an eggplant I've never heard of one of these before give me a second okay so I did a little research and I felt silly doing it because come on eggs on a plant like actual eggs it turns out according to google there is actually a plant out there called the easter eggplant i'll pop up an image uh, right here so you can see what it looks like but apparently these eggplants are actually plants that look like they have eggs but they're not real eggs they don't have a yolk or anything so i'm assuming that maybe someone just took eggs and glued them onto the plant and that's the whole trick of it all but that was a really trippy video to watch it had me going there for a second and i did learn that there's an actual egg plant out there called the easter egg plant i might have to get me one of those if they grow in my area because that's pretty cool have you ever investigated a case where someone randomly began to bleed from the hands absolutely not but What's interesting is if you read about earlier cases, people reported to have bled from this area, from the palms. But when people realize that's not anatomically possible, like mm -hmm. if Christ were crucified through the palms, he wouldn't the be able weight. to hold his yeah. own weight. Yeah. So then they realize, oh, it was through the wrists. And after that idea came out, then when people had the stigmata, they started bleeding through the wrists. So how is uh, the psyche contributing to the manifestation of this blood? Is it psychosomatic? Is it paranormal? Is it all of the above? Ever since I've learned about stigmata, and I learned about it when I was a kid, it blew my mind that people suffered the same pain as Christ. I don't know if I necessarily believe that now or if it's just something 
that the mind is creating and it's just like a mind over matter type of situation or like this person said maybe it is paranormal i have not really heard about people suffering with stigmata as of recent it's been years and years since i've heard of stigmata in the first place let me know in the comments do you believe that people actually can suffer those effects and do you think that it's spiritual do you think it's just a mental game what do you think it is because that to me is really crazy if people are actually just getting magical scars on them in certain areas of their body that resembles jesus being hung up on the cross that to me is just really mind-blowing and kind of scary the following security footage is coming from a home in argentina the family claims to have captured what they believe is a duende or a goblin on their security camera as you see the shadow dart across the street it is seems small maybe it's somebody hunched over maybe it's someone on a bike we truly don't know. I'm not even gonna play that whole video because I'm almost certain that was someone on a bike. Come on now. Have y'all seen what's going on once again with Wyoming? This guy woke up and discovered a huge fault line had just been created around his road that leads to his house. Not just one, y'all, but multiple fault lines, y'all. The dragons are waking up. Check this out, y'all. You ready for something wild? That's a fault line. Crack goes up there, comes down here, crosses our road here. This is all sinking in here. Like that, it's literally moving. You can see it. Cross all the way through there, all the way on that hillside. How deep that is? It's probably a good two feet deep. Like it just up earth that. But that's not even the wildest part. I gotta take a step back to show you. That's our road. Didn't move about five that way this is where we used to drive and that's where it moved to so why isn't this on the news you heard him he said it's scary driving over it but why isn't this on the news? Why isn't this on the news, y'all? Like, TikTok is doing a great job of showing these type of things. What's happening there? And like five more down this road. But this is the worst one so far. Y'all see this? And yet no news outlet has covered this. I have to say, that was probably one of the best Conscious Juice videos I've seen where he wasn't just like spazzing out over the scene and man let me tell you those fault lines were scary to move a road basically five foot over that's intense now i did see mountains in the background and that was an amazing landscape all around but normally from what i understand fault lines are pretty common when you're around mountain ranges so maybe that's just a common occurrence but that one looks serious only bathing and eating honey for a month until his stools and urine all turn into honey he was later consumed for. This is a weird legend of body donation, self-sacrifice, and self-mummification in honey. And no, it's not Winnie the Pooh. A mellified man or a human mummy confection is a medicinal substance created by soaking a human cadaver in honey. Some of the earliest known records of mellified corpses come from the Greek historian Herodotus in the 4th century. He recorded the Assyrians used to embalm their dead with honey. A century later, it was said that Alexander the Great was allegedly preserved in a honey-filled sarcophagus. In the 16th century, Ben Kao Gungmu, an encyclopedia of Chinese medicine, retells a story of elderly men in Arabia who nearing the end of their lives would submit themselves to this process. Quote, it is recorded that in the Tianfeng country, there was an old man 70 or 80 years old willing to sacrifice his body for the general public. 
so he stopped taking any food except for drinking honey daily. After his death, people in the country kept him in a stone coffin filled with honey. After 100 years, the body became a kind of honey preserved thing that was used as a drug. When someone was suffering from an injury to his body, including bone fractures, a little of the honey man could be taken as a drug. It worked right away. Well, let me tell you, if I had to consume honey from someone laying in it for 100 years, I think that would heal my ailments just without taking the honey. I'm fine. I don't need it no more. I am cured. See, this is proof that all those guys are bullshit. It's fake. They're piping it down there. I don't know about that. That just looked like a regular clay drain line. If that was really providing pressure to spew out like the geysers in, in Yellowstone, it would probably have to be something a little denser than clay pipes, right? Lord Jesus, I had stumbled upon an article that about maybe shooting my soul out my fucking butt. You know me. Their source was trust a bro, and I did not trust a bro. I should have trusted bro because it's 100% fucking real. In my defense, though, how was I supposed to read that and take it seriously upon first fucking glance? Again, though, it checks out, and it's 100% fucking true. There are slight variations in the articles, but they all essentially say the same fucking thing. A Swiss startup company called Final Spark has developed 16 mini human brains that they're calling organoids to power a supercomputer, calling it a neuro platform and biocomputing. Yes, I'm fucking judging. How in the fuck? I got so many goddamn questions and not enough information that my grubby grippers. I'd be willing to bet money this was the idea of a white man. God fucking damn it. Give me your science card. You're not allowed to science no more. Is this like the potato clock, but like on steroids? I am so terrified that those little dudes have some sort of sentience and are just trapped. And there's no way to fucking tell. That's how you get computers that want to fucking kill you. That's how you get goddamn Skynet right there. Jesus butternut Christ. That is pretty interesting and it reminds me of something from Warhammer. Just a little quick tad bit about Warhammer if you're not familiar with it. In Warhammer 40k, they do not like to use AI. In fact, AI technology is kind of like against the law. So what they do is they use human brains so they have computers that are hooked up to human brains so that it's still ran by humans with a form of super intelligence. And that's not 100% accurate lore to the Warhammer 40k world, but it's pretty close. And this really reminded me of it. It is so cool. And it's not even this amazing pelican that flew with me forever here as I'm driving over this bridge, but it's this crazy cloud. And I'm gonna show you closer in a second, but do you see what I see there? Can you see it? Check this out. All right, you guys know I see dogs in the stars, but they are in the clouds too. Tell me you do not see this perfectly tongue, even look at that perfect eye. Much like stars are not what we've been told our whole lives, that they're not burning balls of gas quintillions of miles away. I think the same thing is true with clouds. Uh, that's got some copyright music that I'm definitely just gonna go ahead and end this video here. It was getting a little ridiculous. I tried giving Fittus Flat Earther a chance because he has some fun videos, but that one was a little bit too much. If anything, it looks like Falcor from NeverEnding Story, The Lucky Dragon. How it feels when you just get off work? I'm home! I just left, bro. No, no, it's, 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 it's bad time. I just left. I just closed. I know y'all playing. Bro, it's, it's, it's bad time. It really is like that sometimes, I swear. When I'm working my day job and I come home, I record my videos, and it's like after I'm done editing and everything and I sit down, I'm waking up again to go back to work. It's really crazy. There's this video that I see on TikTok. You know how campfires, they kind of give off like a glare? Yeah, yeah. There was this grandpa holding his grandchild. Yeah. He was dancing around. The person on the opposite side of the campfire was taking a video. A lot of people are saying that it's the glare from the campfire. But the thing is, the child points out something dancing next to no it. Way. In the video. So, let me see. And it follows him. The caption is, this is so scary. I know y'all see that thing following him. Let me him. see, let me see. Just wait, just wait. You see that? Oh, shit. don't look it. Just keep watching, keep watching. Bam! It's like dancing. Yo, it beside. has horns. Yeah. Look, look. And then, oh, oh my bam. god! Look, and the baby will point it out. Yo, what the? Fuck? Now it's here. Look, the baby's looking at it. Look, look. He said, "Gamma, stop." Ah, aquí estoy en un empate. 
and points out if it oh look, 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 look. At first I was like, yeah, that's just smoke or maybe a reflection from the camera lens. But when it started to run across the screen, it definitely looked like a sentient object. I don't know if it's a reflection happening somewhere off screen or what it might have been, but that definitely looked like some kind of entity of some sort. Probably just some kind of glare, but it did actually look like a humanoid entity of some kind. I've always thought that my daughter was my grandmother reincarnated. I gave her a picture of her today and uh, you guys tell me what you think. Clairvoyance, mediums, psychics, please tell me what you guys think about this because it, I, I wasn't expecting this. This is the first time showing Arrow this picture. I want to see how she reacts. Who is that? You're just touching her own face. What the fuck? Is that your... Era, who is that? Why were you just touching your own face? Run, back up a little bit. That's my grandma. Yeah, you're grandma. She's lots of us. Why are you just touching your own hair? Is that yours? Man, I don't want to sound like that guy, but for some reason it always like irks my nerves when I, I see like grown adults around children and they're using foul language. I know that sounds like, oh, you're using foul language. It's such a bad thing. But it's just like, Something that just bothers me personally, so I'm sorry about that if that also bothers people. But to the video, it does make me wonder if either children have some kind of connection to either ancestors of the past, or if they are somehow tied to a spiritual realm where they kind of remember the lives of people from the past. It's a really big thing, and it always fascinates me when children talk about their past lives because. They should have no knowledge of certain things that they're talking about and it be so accurate. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think that this kid might actually be that person's grandmother and they're just slightly remembering their past? Or maybe it was just a kid just seeing the picture and just pointing at it and referencing themselves to the image because that could also be the case. But in this video, it did look like when that little girl seen that photo that she was looking at it in memory of that being her, you know? That's the, that's the, that's kind of what I picked up from it. I, I would love to have a little place like that. That's probably where I would shoot my videos if I lived in New Jersey. But I guarantee you in the condition that that place is and how small it is, it's probably a whole lot more than what I'm paying for here in South Carolina. Be careful the next time you jump into the ocean. If you're not careful, you could accidentally jump into the mouth of a baby megalodon like this diver. Well, that would probably end my diving career. I would never want to get in the water after that ever again. That was like a, a close call. Her head was almost right there in its mouth. Disgusting. Is language a virus from outer space? William S. Burroughs in The Ticket That Exploded, quote, The word is now a virus. The flu virus may have once been a healthy lung cell. It is now a parasitic organism that invades and damages the central nervous system. Modern man has lost the option of silence. Try halting subvocal speech. Try to achieve even 10 seconds of inner silence. You will encounter a resisting organism that forces you to talk. That organism is the word. Burroughs saw language as an alien force. Language is an effective tool to disturb human understanding and communication, and it can even be used to mentally or socially oppress and manipulate the masses. A virus works on its own without needing human help. It attaches to a host, feeds on it, and spreads to other hosts. 
Similarly, language affects us all not just by communicating or persuading, but by spreading like an infection. Bits of language attach to other bits, using people as hosts to reproduce and spread. Richard Dawkins introduced memes in 1976, highlighting the idea of how communication spreads. A meme is a unit of cultural information spread by imitation. Cultural information spreads among people similar to a virus, using memes as the basic units of culture. Language affects us this way, because words and phrases are closely tied to the ideas they represent. So, are you infected? It's funny because in my videos, I always start with the intro and then I always say, let's get into it. That's something, that is words that I use in real life all the time. When I'm at work and before I hit a heavy project, I always go, all right, let's get into it. Like, I say that a lot. It just makes me wonder if some of the people that watch my videos also use that phrase because I say it in every video and you've just watched it enough times that you're like, let's get into it. Let me know in the comments if anyone actually uses that phrase, mainly because of me. I'm not trying to brainwash people, I promise. Have you heard of the Acambora artifact? So these artifacts were discovered in Mexico in 1994. They consisted of 33,000 artifacts found. The artifacts were so strange and I've never heard of them, probably because the story's trying to get swamped over by the Smithsonian. They consisted of stone and clay, like figurines and stuff of like dinosaurs. Oh. There was one figurine of a warrior riding a triceratop. And then they had other figurines of like mermaids, human animal <gasps> hybrids. They even had one that looked like Bigfoot. But like the whole, totally messes with the whole narrative yeah. that humans interacted with dinosaurs. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a man the timeline riding a dinosaur. <laughs> the timeline is scrambled. It was authenticated by three men in the profession that were like, they knew what they were looking at and what they were yeah. talking about. Yeah. The Smithsonian was like funding it. Like, nope, this is all, it's a fraud. None of these are real. We're going to carbon data ourselves. And they did. And they're like, these are only 30 years old. Everyone's like, what? So then this journalist, John Tierney, he filed a freedom of information request for the Akambor of files that Smithsonian had and the Smithsonian's like we don't know where they are and he's like well can I go look at the artifacts and they said no it's placed in storage and it's not able to be viewed by the public I truly believe that dinosaurs or whatever the creatures were called back then truly existed I like that idea that there was dinosaurs whatever they were actually called in that time frame I don't know what they are but in this time frame I'm just gonna call them dinosaurs or dragons and when you see things like that being brought up from old dig sites it's like come on that was literally a person riding a triceratops you cannot tell me that there wasn't triceratops now thousands of years ago if the carbon dating is correct who knows if it's true or not because I don't know if I would necessarily trust a Smithsonian to do it because they might lie and say that, you know, ah, it's only 30 years old, even though it's 30,000 years old, just because they don't want that narrative pushed to the masses, you know? And then it also makes me wonder if we had them in the past and we don't have them today, is that because we do rapid evolving or was there some kind of mass extinction that happened and things just regrew in a different way because of the atmosphere and the surrounding areas? Let me know in the comments of what you think about this. Do you believe that we had dinosaur-like creatures, whether you want to call them dinosaurs or dragons, we could have had them thousands of years ago to hundreds of thousands of years ago. I like to believe that we did. Let me know in the comments of your beliefs. The following footage is from the account of official Joseph Z. In the video, he's explaining that Noah's Ark is exactly where it has been stated in text in the Bible, the Epic of Gilgamesh, other historical texts, which is atop of Mount Arat in eastern Turkey. And he claims that due to the earthquakes in the region, it's actually pushed down the boat. And now we can see basically its walls and outlines. And based off the sonar that was taken on it, they can see the actual rooms and just different things in the boat itself. But this is a hard like divide within the scientific community as well as the, the public community. One side says, yes, this is Noah's Ark, and it's always been there, and this is proof. The other says, no, it's a myth. It's There's no boat there. It's rocks. Let's take a look and listen to what he has to say. It's pretty compelling. Tell me what you think. Did we find Noah's Ark, and is it always been where it's stated in historical text? Here it is, Noah's Ark, a sign in our time. You can see the structure. This is the outer wall. 
That's the bow of the ship going all the way around to the very back of the boat. Then you see this boulder that came, some people feel it came through the side because the arc originally was up here in this mountain range and slid down to this point. As a matter of fact, this range up here is mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh. So there's so many things. There's even a settlement up here that they believe Noah and his family lived in for a time. And when they were here, they were able to carve things in the walls, such as giraffes and elephants, things that are not indigenous to this region. You see it, but when you look at this, it was only revealed because earthquakes dropped the ground around it, causing the walls of the Ark to pop up. And they've scanned it. They found that there's structures, rooms, right angles. There's even a corridor or a tunnel under here that matches some of the old schematics of the Ark. Very interesting. To be honest, when I was watching this video, I thought that that mountain range was the supposed Ark. But then when the guy started talking, he was talking about it being on the lower portions of the range. I kind of see the shape. I don't know if I necessarily believe it. I hope to see further discovery of this, though, to, to prove whether it is a boat or the Ark itself, because that would be an amazing find. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that that's actually Noah's Ark, or do you think that that's just some kind of mountain range and it just so happens to look sort of like a boat? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here today. As always, if you enjoyed any of the clips, links are in the description down below. And I know my last few videos have been getting really bad with the audio being muted, some of the clips being cut out. I'm really sorry about that. YouTube has been giving me the worst time as far as keeping my videos uploaded because apparently there's copyright music, there's things that's a sensitive topic that people aren't supposed to listen or watch. It's been a struggle, but I'm working it. And again, if anything gets muted, if anything gets cut, I'm really sorry about that. But with that being said, have a good day.